Hey, it's Greg Stanley with the Collector Car Podcast, continuing our coverage of the Las Vegas Concord Elegance at the Wynn Las Vegas. I am super thrilled to have this guest on board now because he's the whole reason I'm here. So, Stuart Sovek, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. This is this is a lot to talk about because you're the founder and chairman of the Las Vegas Concord Elegance, and you've mentioned it before, and I just want to call it out to the listeners this is such an amazing event, and you put it together in five months. Tell us, yeah. tell us a little bit about how that all came together and how you were actually able to do it. So we'd done a couple shows before. We started in 2019, and we got shut down, unfortunately, in 2020, like everybody else, because of COVID. We came back in 21, but then we got a call from the wind and said, we'd like to talk to you about an opportunity. And they called us in, and we talked about uh, doing Concord Elegance on the grass on the on the golf course at the Wynn Las Vegas, and I'm like, what a dream come true! I mean, it's amazing, and it, the the marriage of of Wynn the hotel and Concord Elegance is just unlike anything else. So we talked about how to do it. They said we want to be one of the best shows in the world, and uh, help us do it, show us how to do it, and we teamed up, and that was just uh, like May or June. So we really had a, a limited time to do it. I mean, we, normally we would have um, you know, enjoy a nice year or or two to do that. But uh, we said, let's do it. Let's see. Let's see how much we can get done in five months. And the Win organization can do you know five years worth of work in five months. <laughs> right? They're amazing. Everybody yeah. here is amazing. So it was really incredible. It was a great collaboration. And as we started to get the information out to the general public, it just uh, kind of took on a life of its own. We were hoping originally to have 50 or 100 cars. And I said, oh, yeah, my show, dream of my show is about 100 cars. That's all I can look at in one day. You know, if you really walk around and look at a car, yeah, it, it takes me a long time, 15 minutes per car maybe. You know, it takes me a long time. So I said, 100 cars. Uh, yesterday was 232 cars on the field. And we were getting people calling us with collections. I've got 10, 15 cars. Uh, would you like us to bring them? And you know it's it's a funny thing when you start turning away McLaren Speedtails or <laughs> Enzos or Ford GTs and say sorry, you're in a good spot. <laughs> sorry, we have too many. We love to talk about our first world problems. Yeah, but uh, it just it just took on a life of its own. It was so crazy. Uh, but we were continuing to take cars almost till the end. But just we we had to make sure we could get them all on the field and get them all off afterwards because we only had two hours of daylight left after our show yesterday. But working with the win is a, is a dream collaboration. Uh, they can do things uh, at at m better than anybody else in a much higher level. So it's like the dream to be here with uh, Concord Elegance and Win. It is the most beautiful, perfect. It's it's a magic marriage. It's amazing. Well, it's really amazing because I and I know you do as well. Go to a lot of Concord events, right? And that's, that's where we met. That's yeah. right. That's right. At Cincinnati. So uh, it's it's. What what makes this so special, and, and this is the first time it's been here, it's going to be you know probably multiples better next year, which is hard to believe because the bar has been set so high in the first year. But some of the stuff that popped into my head that make it so different and so unique, it, first off, it's the win. I mean, it's come on, that's win. your home base, right? I yes. mean, It's that, our permanent home base. It's the permanent home base. Yes. That's insane to begin with. But then the way things were executed, so if – in my mind, I mean, everything was really cool. Like throughout the casino, you have these incredible cars that are kind of like the appetizer for the main yes. event. I mean, we had an SJ Duesenberg disappearing top. We had right. Carol Shelby's first race car. We had a bird cage, a bird cage, you know, a we, McLaren Elva, a uh, 1927 Duesenberg Model X. Yeah. I mean, like, you got the Bugatti Type 57. Like, cars. I'm not even to the show yet and I'm blown away. Right. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's, that's just to start with. But then the golf course. The golf course is gorgeous. I mean, yeah. you don't want too many cars because you want quality of cars. You just right. don't want quantity. But I've never had so much space to walk around and not be shoulder to shoulder with other spectators at any show ever. Right. You know, um, the weather's just perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. The wind can control the weather. Yes. I tell people that. <laughs> the wind can do everything. And well, they can control the weather. Well, and then the other thing was the events, the food was unbelievable. Yes. Uh, you know, so it's, it's like, you know what, there's always some weak spot at some concourse, whether it's, you know, amount of space, quality of cars, you know, whatever. But you guys really just knocked it out of the park. I mean, Friday night we had the award ceremony and, uh, that was, 
just great. I mean, you had the live band playing, a little jazz band playing. You yeah. had, you know, like I said, food. But you had some great honorees, right? We have amazing honorees, yeah. We really pride ourselves in what we, what we do and who we present that award to. And especially like bringing people forward, like Monica Zanetti, who people may not have known, but she's a really important person in the car world. The first woman to work for Ferrari on the assembly line and to be hand-selected by Il, Il Commendatore himself. Right. Only four people to build the body of the F40. Right. It's amazing, and she was the only woman on that team, and she was doing that. It was 35 years ago. But what what a what a great person to bring forward. We love to we love to celebrate people that have earned that. You know, like last year, Peter Brock is at a lifetime of achievement. But we also love bringing people forward, like Monica Zanetti, was just that people should know about. Yeah, that maybe they don't. Which is exactly what Helene is. Nobody knew about Helene before we brought her forward. And we idolized her with our with our beautiful statuette. Um, she's our, our logo, our, our our trademark for our show. We dedicate our show to her, but we also you know pushed her, made people aware of her, and now she's in the Automotive Hall of Fame. Yeah, and that award that was created to honor her was unbelievable. I mean, talk about Art Deco. You know, had the influences yeah. of the most exquisite. Uh, hood ornaments in the world right mm -hmm. you know like the yeah. spirit of ecstasy is that i mean it was that kind of some of the idea behind it i mean just to well it depends on your perspective so okay. we wanted to do something really interesting so when we designed that trophy for example we said look we've got to have a trophy that a guy with a 50 million dollar car wants mm, right like what does a guy who has a 20 or 50 million dollar car want we wanted to give him a, a trophy that's appropriate we weren't going to give him a little piece of glass a little, you know, to something you buy on a, at, a, at a trophy shop. We needed to make a trophy that represented us. It was really spectacular. But if it happens to look like a taillight, or if it happens to look, we, someone has said it looks like a high heel, uh, people, but it's in her image. It's an image of her face that we took from photographs. We stylized it. We gave it an Art Deco look. But it, it, can, it can mean anything to anybody, whoever has it. And it's been so cute this weekend, Monica Zanetti, who got it. She's been carrying it around like a little baby all weekend. It's, she's cra I said, I'm going to get you a blanket so you can cradle it and just carry it around like a baby. She, she won't put it down. It's, it's adorable how, much, how, how proud she is to have that. Well, it's so it's cool. Yeah, you mentioned a taillight because the base has this little red reflector kind of in uh -huh. it. And, and when I saw it, I, I thought that, that comes from one of the you know, Art Deco you know, 40s, 50s cars maybe. you know from a tailback maybe you know it can light. be anything you want it to yeah be. i just and thought everybody it was has a different finish about it. Yeah. yeah but we had some great artists working on that and it took a couple of years to develop that and then to find the people to make it but it's a it's an amazing trophy we're very proud of it and only the best of the best will ever get that trophy yeah yeah well and we also have to talk about the uh was it the grand marshal jay leno yeah jay taking leno. everything off yeah it was great you know great i don't to have jay with us i don't know if you can get a bigger car guy than the Jay, right? Yeah, Jay's, uh, everybody loves Jay Leno. And, uh, and he was uh, uh, very gracious to come and be with us and open up our show and help us this weekend. And, you know, everybody loves Jay. Everybody wants to take their photo with Jay. Everyone wants an autograph. And he is so accommodating. He spends time with people. And he's just the greatest guy. And he's a car guy. He's one of us. Yeah. You know, it's so fun. So it's funny. The first person I've ever had my photograph taken with from a celebrity perspective was this morning with oh, Jay. There you go. I had to do it. I'm like, I'm not this guy, but I got to do it, you know? And, and I, I did a, some little videos. You'll see them. I did some little videos of some of my favorite cars from oh, the show field. Yeah. And I had to pick his Ford Bronco. Of course. Because it's such a one of one. It's got like the Shelby engine in it. Ford built yeah. it. He had it on the parade today. I mean, just such a cool, beautiful truck. So. Yeah. And that's Jay. Yeah. You know, that just, that's definitive Jay Leno. Hey, let's take it out, put a different engine in it. Let's do some things, you know, and, and just make it, I mean, nothing normal, nothing normal about it. Any of his vehicles, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. He's just a great guy. Right, right. Well, we had some incredible cars on the show field. Now, we did. I've covered quite a few, and I know, you know, the press releases have all gone out about the best of show, best of class and such. But what were some of the cars that were on your list? You know, they didn't necessarily have to be the winners, but if they are, that's great. But are there some you know, cars that caught your eye that may not be on everyone's radar? Well, you know, the, the fun thing about being the chairman is you get to choose all the That's cars. True. That's Every true. Every car has to come through me. Well, our selection committee too, but I ultimately get to make the selections. And it was really fun this year because we had so many great cars to choose from. Yeah. It was fantastic. So what was there? That beautiful 66 uh, Ferrari Superfast, which yes. is such a rare and amazing car. I mean, it's just a, a ferocious car. 
Uh, the beautiful Delahays here. I mean, the Mullen Museum had two Delahays on display. We had great Duesenbergs, and we had great classic cars. We had a field of 109, 149 amazing classic cars that were judged. And then we had 90 of the greatest hypercars in the world on yes. the other field. Yeah. So, I mean, from, from the little car company who had their little baby Testarossa J oh. uh, to the, to the uh, Bugatti Adivo, uh, we had one of a kind Koenigseggs, uh, all those beautiful cars, but like the Duesenberg, um, the, the 27 Duesenberg Model X, that's just a sexy car. And it's beautiful. And I think it's back in our, it's back in our showcase, our jewel case now. It's in the middle of the hallway between Dior and Chanel. And I think that's the greatest place for that car because it's a, ge it's a gem in, in itself. Yeah, so I, for our listeners or viewers that are watching, I'm going to put up a video of me chasing that car through the casino when it was being moved because uh, okay. it's such a cool car. They didn't recruit you to get in and push? No, I oh. would have I would have pushed. Yeah. But that was actually one of my top 10 favorite cars from the show. Yeah, and what was beautiful. so cool is the way you guys laid it out because that was like the prototype car. You had the, the boat tail, yeah. you know, that eventually went into production where the Auburn Boattail Speedster, which was ironically right there next to it, so you yes. could kind of look at the two. Uh, just yeah. brilliant and wonderful way to do that. So that yeah. was, it was... It's amazing. So that that came from Indiana, from the Auburn Cord uh, Duesenberg Museum, Auburn, Indiana. Uh, it was a great to have them on board here with us. We have a lot of museums participating, but just great cars from the Peterson Museum, great cars from ACD, great cars from the, the National Automobile Museum and Reno, the, the hair collection. Uh, we, we, we pride ourselves in bringing private collection cars, but also, you know, putting on a, uh, like a pop-up museum. Right. Uh, great show cars that you'd have to go chase all over the country to see. They're all in our field in one day. But we had some, just a, just a variety from 1913. We had a 1913 uh, Cadillac from San Diego and uh, all the way up to, you know, the, the latest, greatest 2023. So we had a, a great display. When I go to, when I go to a, a car show, I want to go and see all kinds of different things. Right. I love the classics. I love the Concorde cars, but I also want to see what's new and fresh and the cool things and all the things that are out of reach for most of us. Uh, it's fun to look and dream and talk to the guys who own them. The beautiful Aston Martin 177. Yes. I mean, you just yeah. never see those. But even some of the uh, some of the other cars on our field just, that you just you know never see. And even a, a, the beautiful birdcage from Arizona mm. that was on our show. Just a, a great race car with a great history. And that was reported to be the most original Maserati birdcage in existence, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's and it's it's being judged, but they're like, "What do we do? It's got dents on it." it goes, it's a race car. The thing's <laughs> right. been repainted. If it's not repainted five or ten times a year, it's not doing its job. Right. You know, right. so race cars have different histories than Concorde cars, but it's fantastic. It's a beautiful, amazing car. Yeah, there's some cars that caught me a little bit by surprise. I, I I like them. You know, they're not necessarily what I love, but then I got into the details of them. I'm like, wow. And so I'll, I'll call out two of those cars. One of them is the Lamborghini Diablo, what sometimes referred to as the UPS Diablos because yeah. the last 40, 20 were brown, 20 were gold. Uh, I have personal, I was able to see two of the, the gold ones before, but I'd never seen one of the brown ones. And boy, what a brown one to have. Yeah. It was unbelievable and the last one built apparently the last one built was six miles on it oh six miles what <laughs> i mean i i love the owner and i love the owner's wife they're great people but i want to get in that thing and drive it yeah but at the same time you're like what a what a, a time capsule that is it's a it's like it's a time capsule car it's a it's exactly the way it came off the line and of course it won its class yeah it won its class the other time capsule, which really caught me by surprise, was that, uh, I'm thinking of the year 2000, the, the Mustang Cobra R. Yeah. And I, I'm a Mustang guy. I'm much more of the first-gen Mustang guy. But that one blew me away because, again, it only had like 36 miles on it from new original owners. And you could tell they had such a passion for that car. It was yeah. immaculate. They never took the stickers out of the window. you know. So yeah. they, they bought that new one. They, they appreciated it, and they keep it that way. But I'm like you. I'm a driver. I would... I would probably drive the wheels off of it. Not at this point, but you know. Yeah, uh, but that car is amazing. That was actually the first car to enter our show. And a nice couple from Oregon. Uh, they're really enthusiasts. And I saw the car and I'm like, 26 miles. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. But it is such a time capsule. Everything is with it. And they're so proud. And, you know, we had to move with the car probably four miles. And I said, you know, you're going to put 20% 20, 20 more miles on it just getting it on our field. Yeah. You know, but right. it's just so, it's so cool. And they've kept it that way, and it's an amazing car. And they won their class also, so bravo. Okay. That's nice, it's yeah. A beautiful thing. So I'm about to have the whole crew of you know, Vector experts pop up here shortly yes. for another episode. 
And I know it's the 50th anniversary of the Vector. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about. So I, I've been a Vector fan actually since they came out. I watched them being introduced way back when. I, I, I remember the releases. Wow, it's an American supercar. How, you know, this guy's going to go head to head against Ferrari and Lambo. Those were all the cool cars at the time. Back then it was the Countach, Mira. I mean, we're talking about the 70s. Yeah. And I watched Jerry Weigert put the put the Vector out, and I saw the whole thing, him developing it. I saw it one time at, at Long Beach Grand Prix where he first had it, his little display. Talked to him. I thought, wow, that's great. You know, the Amer a fighter jet for the street. I think right. that's what his, uh, yeah. he patterned the, the canopy after an F-16. It was really cool. And I, I've always admired it. And, and uh, a friend who you're going to be talking to next um, has introduced me to a lot of the people who have them. And he suggested, hey, let's get a 50th anniversary. It's coming up. I know a lot of the collectors. Let's do that. I said, you know, I've seen, I've seen across the country at different Concours, one or two spotted here and there. But I, let's get a group of them together because they've really aged nicely yeah. through time. I think they're more beautiful than they were when they came out. Because yep. maybe I was thinking more Lamborghini or Ferrari. We wanted to look more like that. And it didn't have that feel, but they've aged really gracefully. And they look great. And they have a number of them on our field. There's only you know only, only a handful made, and we had five of them on our field in yeah. different colors, including that big yellow one, which we call Big Bird, which is from Cincinnati. So yeah. I actually saw yes. that car about five years ago, and yeah. so there were what 14 of the Gen 2 and 22 of the Gen 1. So you're talking 36 cars, and you had you know we had three five. Of, we had, oh we had three of those, three of those, yeah, and two of the W8s. Yeah, so really really great showing there. So That's well good. we have to go here in a minute here, but I did want to ask you like tell us a little bit about next year. Like you know you don't. Have I'm sure there's a lot of secret plans in place here, but what can you Super share? Super secret. Super secret. So what can you share about next year to kind of like give our listeners a heads up? What I tell people the first year, I tell people this is this was the show that you didn't see coming. Nobody saw this coming. If if they if they know the win, they knew it was a high level and they're thinking it's on the win, it's at a golf course, it's gonna be super cool. Yeah. But they had no idea. And when the guys came and drove over the hill and saw that for the first time saw that beautiful fresh grass, saw all the beautiful trim and the level at which we were, we were operating, and everybody's mind was blown. Yeah. And that's exactly the effect I wanted. I wanted people to see this, because even my team, as we walk on this every day, we're like, wow, people have no idea what's coming at them. It's so <laughs> right. beautiful. Everything here is so magnificent. The wind property is amazing inside now, everywhere you look. And that's the way it was designed to be. But uh, it's just fabulous property. So this was not what people expected. Now they expect this again, but we're going to take it to a whole nother level next yeah, year. Yeah. And next year we're moving to the week before Formula One. So our date next year will be 11-11, November 11th, Saturday also. And we'll have um, you know maybe an auction house in between. We'll do our show for a couple of days, hopefully have an auction house, and then go into Formula One. So it's going to be nine amazing days of events here based around the win. We've got all kinds of great ideas for next year. Like you said, they're super secret. But expect an elevated show. We did this whole show in five months. Right. We've got 12 months now. So uh, there's a lot of ideas floating around. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get on it right away. And we're going to, we're going to, we want to beat ourselves. And we want to take our, our own show to another level. Yeah. And right. it's going to be great. Give us some time and it will really perfect everything that we did and just make it better and better. And that's our goal to be better every year, to provide an amazing experience that you can't get anywhere else at a five diamond resort, at one of the most beautiful properties. And everybody's saying, it's so nice to just walk downstairs and have everything here. We don't have to get in a taxi and go anywhere. We don't have to get in our car. It's, right. it's beautiful. Everything's here. So yep. we, we're all uh, self-contained here. We're gonna have some great, exciting events next year, and we're just gonna build on what we've done. Yeah, that's awesome. Expect, well, you don't know what to expect. Expect the it's unexpected, gonna be right? It's gonna better, better and better every year. They wanna be the, one of the world's top shows, and, and they're gonna they're gonna do it. Yeah, it got in, off to in, so. in our own organic way. We want to be the best thing in Las Vegas for sure. Well, and and got off to such an incredible start. So thank you. I'm yeah. glad you could be here for it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm really little, proud. You're you're the reason I'm here. So thank, thank you. you so much for that. Thank you. I do appreciate that. But thank you for being on the Collective Car Podcast. That's a pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>